She's like, yeah, I'll show you your room. And he's like, ah, ma'am, I should sleep in a different building to, you know, avoid heterosexual intercourse between the two of us because I'm very attractive. Temptation would be a problem. And she's like, yeah, yeah, close one, close one, yeah. So <laughs> oh, and he literally says the words, I wouldn't want anyone to get the wrong impression. And I'm like, you just established that there are no other human beings within earshot. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll stay in this room if Mike Pence can stay outside the door all night to make sure you don't come in and take a peepers at my Johnson or my buddy cheeks. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by a middle-aged podcaster from suburban New Jersey, Eli Bosnick. Eli, that's a description of you. How's it going? Uh, well, it was better before you introduced me like you got your notes from my depression, but I'm okay, Heath. How are, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Cincinnati, so whatever that means. And we also have veteran masochist we're dropping the word guest she's an official regular dedicated bar stool the whole thing cara santa maria is here cara welcome back why do i keep doing this to myself great question <laughs> great question. wait and by the way heath i think i'm older than eli so thank you <laughs> <laughs> but not appearance wise <laughs> you, you, you play younger let's all be yeah. honest yeah. wait eli how old are you i'm 33 Oh my god, you're a baby! Yeah, I'm really. I just look like a miner's ghost. I'm actually not a miner's ghost. Keith, how old are you? I'm 39. Going to be 40. Okay. All right. I'm 39. Yeah, yeah. We don't need to like do counting. Thank you. <laughs> no counting. Good. I'm 37. You'll always be older than me, huh? That's right. <laughs> We're both from the Reagan administration. First term. Let's all just own it. All right, Kara. 40. What are we going to be breaking down today? Let's talk about it. Well, I have no idea what I just watched, so I can't <laughs> talk about it. It was, it was an utter blur. I don't know what that was. It was called Sons of Thunder, but for some reason, you guys made me watch episode three, so I'm really lost. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good point. I guess we should get Kara caught up on the, the Sons of Thunder phenomenon mm -hmm. because the plot is fucking nonsense. So the main character, you, you met him now, it's an ex-biker gang member who found Jesus and got a job as a nomadic hobo with a heart of gold. Yes. That's his job mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He drives around Texas looking for work and then he bothers the people who hire him about some kind of God thing until those people make him leave. <laughs> uh, not just the episode you just saw. That's all of them. Yep. That's the it's formula the of this show. show. Uh, Eli, am I missing anything important? Anything else? Uh, he has a mysterious backstory about a lady who turned him to Jesus, which you right. also saw the that episode. Was, that was in it. Yeah. So, no, no, nothing to add. Oh, yeah, that's you're not what was happening. Right. Oh, you are okay. all caught up. There you okay. go. All right. He has no name, too, right? This is a thing. <laughs> like, no, no use of a first name through the whole show. Oh, wow. Oh. He doesn't get named in this episode. His name is Simon in the okay. show, but they forgot right. about that for this yeah. episode. I was going to yeah. say, gun to my head, I could not tell you this character's <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> He's Simon, like Simon Peter, Peter Simon Bible guy, right? Something like that? Yeah, no, that's Ooh. a name in the Bible for sure. Yeah. All right, well, Eli, how bad was this episode three of this television <laughs> show? Well, if you love gritty biker shows... But you like your plots added the way most people remember to turn the oven off. You <laughs> will love this television show. Oh, it's pretty good. I know it's horrible, but I actually enjoy watching these. I don't know. I'm like <laughs> locked in. I'm, I'm into these. I'm going to start binge watching them. I think they're still making them. According to IMDb, it's like 2019 until still going. They, they're they still working on it. Okay, but Heath, keep in mind that they're also working on a third Revelation Road movie, according to IMDb. Yeah, they are. Some dreams don't come true. <laughs> <laughs> David A.R. White really needs money. Yeah. Alright, is there anything y'all would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Well, 
I don't know. I'm kind of torn because I want to say best worst beard. <laughs> I actually wrote down best worst beard and changed it. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I was wondering if maybe you had already done a best worst beard. So so then I was thinking best worst use of a red camera because they paid some money for those cameras in the show. Oh, yeah. They didn't yeah. know how to use them, no. but they paid some good money for the cameras. Yeah, th- th- there's a budget behind this. It's yeah. Pure flex money. <laughs> David Hair White and Andrea Logan White money, half and half. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're getting divorced. So uh, I was oh. going to go with best worst actor reel. Oh, <gasps> there's an actor reel. I, yeah. I put a link for it. It's on yes. YouTube. So the star of this show, who plays Simon, Randall Reeder, the, the giant nomadic Jesus hobo, his reel is fucking amazing. Most of it, it's just tiny little clips where he has one little line and he's technically in the same shot as an actor you've heard of. So like his pitch for getting a job is basically like, I've said a sentence next to Ed Norton and Josh Brolin very quickly. Oh yeah, look at Channing Tatum. Yeah, yeah Channing Tatum, Jonah Hill. Yeah, No way, he was in 21 Jump Street. Yeah, a big chunk of the reel is just 21 Jump Street happening and he's technically in it for a second. Hey, good on him. Yeah, I mean, he's had jobs. He was in Castle he was in those, you know, Brolin. He was in uh, George did the W movie with with Brolin, but the end of this reel, which you're probably about to get to if you're watching right now, uh-huh. it ends with him getting ready to sexually abuse Harold and Kumar at Guantanamo Bay Prison. That's uh, the finale yeah. of the reel nice. about what kind of acting jobs he's perfect for. They say close on your best work. And that is absolutely... <laughs> and he's done it. His best work. You know what else I love? It's like, you know how some actors really transform themselves? You know, they're like, they're method and they become the character. And other absolutely. actors are the same dude in every movie <laughs> they're in. The beard doesn't change. No, nope. no. I think he's in the same clothes throughout that entire reel <laughs> of different movies. I have two priority here. First, we can afford to hire this actor. Yes, we can. <laughs> Second of all, we want him to shave off his garden gnome beard. Conclusion, <laughs> we hire him for a fake movie. Tell him to shave off his garden gnome beard. This is a great idea. Renew his entire career. I want him to have a beard fight with you, Eli Bosnick, in reality. Oh, his beard would take mine in a second. Yours, in a is, second. Looking pretty, yours is looking pretty close to his, actually. Mine right is now. just, I would love someone else to hold my baby the beard. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm going to go with best worst sneaking, as we've oh, hinted at already. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, story. this is a larger gentleman. <laughs> He's larger. like nine feet tall. He's enormous. 800 pounds. He's a former professional wrestler, amateur professional wrestler. He's enormous. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to leave it there. We'll we'll get to it when we get to it. <laughs> <laughs> that guy does some sneaking. That's and it's the best worst. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break while I go ahead and cancel my Pure Flix trial before I get charged again. Because, you know, once again, I did not find the entertainment I was looking for. I keep trying with them. <laughs> and I just genuinely don't find what I'm looking for. And then uh, we'll be right back to tell you all about Sons of Thunder, Episode 3, Hunter Hunted. All right. How about this? Like, Okay. So, no, um, that's that's your lower jaw. Okay, but but I feel like it's going to contribute to the whole uh, thing, right? I mean, less than you think. Hey, guys, what are you doing here? What's Marsh doing here? What am I doing here? Oh, hey, Noah. Yeah, I've just been feeling a little down lately. You know, anxiety, depression, that kind of thing. So Marsh is helping me get a stiff upper lip. And I'm... Get, get ahead. No, so hard to coordinate with ads, Noah. Ads. So just, She's okay, don't worry about it. Upper lip. Anyway. Fine. Uh, Marsh, yeah, I think I'm getting it. The uh, stiff upper lip thing. I think I'm getting Yeah, he's, he's, he's not. No, he's not. Mm. Well, Heath, if something's interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals, why don't you just try BetterHelp? Oh, what's BetterHelp? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. Wait, so I can do real counseling online? You sure can. Plus, there's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. So if you need a therapist who's sex work positive, secular or trans affirming, they can help you with that. OK, you know, that, that does sound pretty great. I, I don't suppose they got like an English version, have they? Actually, the service is available for clients worldwide. And best of all, BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. 
Oh, so there's no awkward therapist breakups. Exactly. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's Better H-E-L-P, and join over a million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and God-awful movies listeners will get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. Thanks, Noah. That sounds great. Uh, okay, Marsh, uh, back on the plane, I guess. <sighs> Seriously, it's it's like a six hour flight and then two weeks quarantine. Can I can I not just stay for lunch? I mean, you could, but Eli's cooking today. Okay, yeah, no, I'll I'll eat on the plane. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Mm-hmm. You guys want tofu on your tofu? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you tell that you know what that I'll rot in H E double hockey sticks before she gets a penny more. One second. Hey, uh, Dave. Yeah, you got a second? <sighs> yeah. What is it, Phil? I'm, I'm just dealing with some divorce stuff right now. Right, right. Divorce, that thing you made movies about not doing for like a decade. You're yeah, doing that now. I did. I did. I made movies for yep. more a than a time. decade about how you should never. You should never divorce. Ever do that. That was the theme. Yeah. yeah. Like a whole movie dedicated just to Just it. entire movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's weird that you're doing that now. Do you have a question for me? About yeah, my- yeah, yeah. I got a question. So. You know our biker show, Sons of Thunder? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, so we had a bit of a mix-up over at the printer, and rather than shoot three episodes, what happened is we shot the three different drafts of the same episode. So it's just the exact same story three times. Oh, really? Yeah. So we're three episodes in, and literally nothing new has happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, how are the viewing numbers? Four. Oh, oh, that's not bad. Four points of the share. That's no, I, no, 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 no. Four people watched it. Oh, then yeah. Well, then it's probably fine to leave the episodes as as they are. Then mm. who who are the four people? Yeah, it's god awful movies again. It's god awful movies. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, then let's let's keep it as it is. Yeah, we'll do. And uh, good luck with that divorce. Sorry about that. She wants my race car bed, Phil. Yeah, real, real sorry to hear that, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to start with another movie crew killing a deer, just like the last time Kara was on. <laughs> so, Thanks, guys. Weird coincidence, <laughs> yeah. we yeah. promise. <laughs> and enormous wrestler guy just crashed his motorcycle into a deer. That's where we're going to start. <laughs> we start with a woman. Is a dead deer lying there. His motorcycle is tipped over and the woman goes did you hit that deer and i wrote my notes no he and i were playing chicken and his car vaporized what the fuck do you think happened no. i crashed my motorcycle and then a, a deer walked over and died next to me just by chance it, it took me a while to realize that i mean it said all over your notes dead deer dead deer and i'm like where's the deer i'm like watching this in the middle of the night and the deer was like the size of a raccoon like it was so small in the middle of the road yeah, this was a last big deer for sure <laughs> yeah. so the first thing i'm thinking in this scene is a what am i watching and b what would jesus do he'd wear a fucking helmet that's what yep. what's this guy doing <laughs> driving around without a helmet so to be fair if you're simon what do you have to lose? You know what I'm saying? It's not like there's a bunch of brain cells rattling around in there. <laughs> He's fine, though. So th- this woman who who finds his crash there, she says, like, what are you lost or something? And he explains how this show works to her. He's like, no, I'm a nomadic Christian biker. I just ride around until like a plot happens, I guess. Uh, maybe it's you. Maybe you're the plot. And uh turns out she is. Well, <laughs> There's there's a good argument to be made. He does not find a plot in this episode, but I get what you're going for. You're the episode. <laughs> and did you guys get a fucky vibe from her invite? I definitely got a fucky vibe. She was like, why don't you come back to my place and fix your hog, if you know what I mean. And then Yeah. Oh, for sure. She's she's a woman who lives all alone on a massive property and never sees other human beings yet. She was wearing a full face of makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like giving him bedroom eyes. Absolutely. Like, why would you invite that man specifically to your home? She is not <laughs> good at making decisions, this woman. Not good. Hey, different strokes for different folks. I get it. Also, this is the first point in the show where nobody introduces themselves and then that, that theme continues. Yeah. So she's basically like, hello, scary man. Would you like to come back to my house? And he's like, yes, woman. 
I will. And never again, <laughs> nary again, do they use a name? Mm-mm. It's no. so weird. No. It's Simon and Kelly, just so we can reference them, but no, they do not tell us that. <laughs> Thank you. That's secret information that only IMDb has. <laughs> <laughs> so uh we're back at her place which Kara I know you haven't watched the other two episodes so far but her place looks super similar to the other two ranches we've been in so far in this year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also one other thing you should uh be aware of is this guy Simon just stops in the middle of real life things happening to him and has flashbacks to like old meth deals like every five minutes or so he's gonna have to do that Mm -hmm. yeah i I got i got that that was a flashback it started to make some sense i mean i wanted to first understand what the show was because of course we see the sons of thunder header at the top and i'm thinking to myself so this is like sons of anarchy but like christy like they couldn't come up with a Absolutely correct. That's that's the pitch written on the front that's of the script. Literally the, the <laughs> whole <laughs> elevator pitch right there. You said okay. it. Yep. Okay. All right. Just just to be clear. Got it. But yeah, he flashes back and we see Merrick Von Hogg. Maverick. Maverick. Maverick, right. von, Maverick von, Hogg. von Hogg. Cuts clothing Van Hogg. And he got... <laughs> so again, I know you weren't there for episode one and two, but Maverick Von Hogg got new tattoos. Between episodes. Wait, is this the guy who is literally covered in tattoos? Yes. Yes. Okay. He did not have an entire black spot on that shoulder in the last episode. <laughs> and I feel like that kind of fucks up the flashback. <laughs> Pure Flix didn't, but I do. <laughs> he made a movie, by the way. Maverick Von Hunt. We need to watch this movie. He made a movie last year where he's like one of the two action stars and it's him and some Australian guy. What? <laughs> I watched the trailer for it. It's all just gunshots. The entire <laughs> movie is just Wait, gunshots. Wait, do they ever say the word Jesus Christ? Because if they do, we could totally do that on the show, right? That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there's there's no way Maverick Von Hogg didn't work in some religious angle to that ridiculous movie. Exactly. There's only <laughs> one way to find out. <laughs> So wait, wait, wait. Before he even flashes back, though, he goes to this woman's house, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't talk about the fact that he goes to this woman's house that apparently looks like the other people's houses. And she just leaves him in the garage with nothing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like earlier, she's like, can I take you to the hospital? And he's like, no. And then she's like, can I take you to my home? And he's like, yes. So then she takes him to her home and she doesn't even offer him like a glass of water. No. It's really weird. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, just you go ahead and use the motorcycle fix shop that I have here at my house. <laughs> so he starts doing that and then he flashes back. And then he flashes yeah. back. Okay, yeah. And it's this gritty biker bar, but Pure Flix can't keep this together for half a second because Merrick Von Hogg and another gang member are doing shots, but they cheers their shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. They're like <laughs> college, like sorority girl. <laughs> to murder and drug Woo! dealing. <laughs> shots, 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 shots. We're bikers. We're in a biker gang. Oh, if Merrick Von Hogg and that guy had run out onto the dance floor, this is my fucking song, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, so this is like right after they do this, this like semi hot woman walks up to this semi hot woman bartender and they have like a look about them. And I had been binging. I've been rewatching the L word on Showtime. So I've been like binging like sexy lesbian scenes for days now. And they start to walk up. And for a moment, I forgot what show I was watching and I got excited. And then I remembered I'm on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's okay. Heath has also been binging sexy lesbian scenes for the last few days. So she's on the exact same page as right, you. Right, Heath, wasn't it? Didn't it feel like for a minute it was going to go there? I Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's Vanessa Angel, too. She's the woman who walks into the bar to talk to her old bartender friend. And they have very good chemistry. I agree. <laughs> right. But this is Savy McSaverson, right? She's the one who's going to save Simon later in the show. This is their meet cute. And their meet cute is sadly not lesbian porn. It's her going to see an old friend who is now a bartender at a dive bar to tell her that maybe she should stop bartending and, and do Jesus instead. I guess, but like, they don't even tell you that. This is like, <laughs> you're having to fill in a lot of blanks here. Because yeah. basically she's like, hi. Are you good? I'm good. And then his flashback was over. And I was like, dude, what? Dude, what? Dude. Yeah, exactly. Hello, you've watched episode one and two of Sons of Thunder, right? <laughs> cool. So you know what's happening. I'm going to eventually become the wife of that huge guy right there. This is how we meet. End of flashback. Wait, they, they're going to get married? 
I think, right, Eli? They they are they're implied to be married it's in one of the other ones. Clear the or timeline at least together, maybe not married. So this this is what I think happened, and I have this later in my notes, but I think it's worth talking about now. I think Sons of Thunder shot two days of flashback footage, <laughs> assuming <laughs> that would be more than enough for a season of their show. <laughs> Used all of it on episode one and two, and we're yeah. like, ah, oh, I mean, I have that thing where Simon farted really loud while she was saying her line, and they were like, keep it in the movie. Uh. <laughs> so now we cut back to Kelly's kitchen. No, we're not in her kitchen yet. <clears throat> oh, okay. This is a very important part. They cut back to the garage, and he goes, does it always rain like this? <laughs> and she's like, like on Earth? <laughs> yeah, we have, you... we have atmospheric conditions here in Texas sometimes. So yes, we Water do. always falls down. Like, to be clear, they both have the same accent. Like, he's <laughs> clearly from the same region that she's from. Like, how does he not know how weather is? Or does she have special <laughs> weather? Yeah. Yeah, he's from the same church group where the entire <laughs> cast is cast from. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Next to the dive bar where they shot all the flashbacks. Exactly. Of yeah. course. So now they're in the kitchen eating the deer he hit. Yeah, like literally an hour <laughs> later. I'm sorry, you cannot prepare a deer that quickly. You just can't. You have to bleed a deer out. You have to butcher it. Like it doesn't work this way. And they should know this. Oh, yeah. She's got it cut up into like Subway sandwiches <laughs> minutes later. And she's putting it into her little fridge. And... I just want to point out that in this scene, I don't know what happened in the foreground, but in the background is a camo lazy boy. And honestly, the universe should have sucked into itself and restarted when we made a camo lazy boy. That's just, just second take. Whatever happened wasn't going well. Oh, my God. Where'd you go? Oh, no, you're in the lazy boy. Okay. Yeah, just always wear that stuff. And she asked him if he has a concussion. He does not. <laughs> well, he does. But he's an idiot. He's like, no, no, no. I've had like a thousand concussions. So I know how to self-diagnose a concussion <laughs> medically. I know. I'm fine. Don't ask me my name. I don't know that. But he does keep having like these weird seizures where he flashes <laughs> back to a dive bar and nothing happens. So. Oh, that's such a better rewrite. <laughs> Crazy Billionaire remake. He has a seizure every time he flashes back. <laughs> we just watch him drooling on the ground. Ooh. <laughs> He starts having flashbacks out of the flashbacks to something even less useful. Yeah, He's having a seizure inside the flashback. <laughs> and she's just standing there going like, I'm pretty sure this is a concussion. <laughs> How many layers deep are we into the doodly doo? I don't know. It feels bad no matter Draw what. Draw me a maze, Simon. Ah, oh, never mind. Oh, it's bad, you guys. It's bad. <laughs> So yeah, they're they're talking. He's He doesn't have a concussion and she offers him work because... This is an episode of Sons of Thunder, and this happens every episode. But mm. it occurred to me, no wonder Christians don't believe in social safety nets. Three episodes in a row, people have just been handing out jobs like candy on fucking Halloween. Right. Yeah. There's just all these, like, lonely people who just need extra help. They never discuss, you know, an hourly wage. You never actually see money exchange hands, which no. is strange. Also, she's like, you think... You want some work while you put your bike together. And I'm thinking like, wait, isn't that the work he's doing? Like he has to, he's fixing his bike. Right. Like he wants to work while he works. I'm very confused. Yeah. This makes no sense. And what is it with the like men situation? He's like, you're here all by yourself. You ain't got no men to help you around. And she's like, well, most men are, you know, and he's like, I know. And I'm sitting oh. here going, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that is that is the required racially problematic dog whistle that they have in every one of these episodes. Oh, is that why I don't get it? Because I can't hear I can't hear that dog whistle. Oh, 100 oh. <laughs> percent. She was like, yeah, no, I'd hire people to work the ranch. But all the, quote, good men are taken and the rest are like. Fur, fur, fur. You yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's almost exactly the line. She literally goes, the rest of the men are. And then she trails off and he like gives her a knowing nod. And I'm sitting here going, who, what are they? What, what are the rest of the men? <laughs> I was really hoping they were going to like spill tea and hot goss. He was like, oh, let me tell you about this guy I dated last week. Okay. So his name <laughs> is Knuckles. And let me tell you, he earned that nickname. I don't, I can... <laughs> so is she really saying like the rest of them are brown? The, she, she's not saying that, but she's saying that. I okay. think that's what's <laughs> I was very happening. confused. I was like, the rest are bad in bed. Like, I don't know what she's getting at. 
I shouldn't have put fucking me on the job requirements on LinkedIn. It's my fault. Right? <laughs> Right. But, but regardless, Simon is like, all right, well, I could use a few days of work. And also I live here now. That's a normal thing. Right. <laughs> and she's like, yep, that's what we're doing. Oh, you live my here favorite. now and you work for me. Yeah. Here's my favorite. They're sitting there. The food is laid out. She starts to dig in and he goes, don't you think we should pray? And she's like, <laughs> oh, okay. And then they pray. And then she goes, let me show you to your room. <laughs> <laughs> and they never touch the food. <laughs> uh, the praying's the important part. I didn't notice that. Yeah. <laughs> They've got eat. some amazing venison Subway sandwiches sitting right there minutes after <laughs> killing a deer. Yeah. And then he just walks away from them and n- never to return. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Also, I love this part. She's like, yeah, I'll show you, show you your room. And he's like, ah, ma'am, I should sleep in a different building to you know, avoid heterosexual intercourse between the two of us because I'm very attracted. Temptation would be a problem. And she's like, yeah, yeah, close one, close one. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> oh, And he literally says the words, I wouldn't want anyone to get the wrong impression. And I'm like, you just established that there are no other human beings within earshot. <laughs> like there's no one else around. I'll tell you what, I'll stay in this room if Mike Pence can stay outside the door all night to make sure you don't come in and take a peepers at my Johnson or my buddy cheeks. <laughs> And then she goes, her reaction to that, because this is a mythical Christian universe, is, oh, a gentleman. If I am in a building with a woman and she goes, this is where you'll be sleeping, and I'll go, oh, but people will think we're fucking. I'm not a gentleman. I'm a murderer. (laughs) That's true. The response to that is taser or mace. (laughs) So they head outside to comment on how nice her place is. And it is. We've seen it in two other episodes. Okay, but here's the thing that really gets me. Nothing happened in this scene. You guys, you guys choose. <laughs> Correct. Correct. You choose. In, you, what they don't see, the people listening, is that there's a document and we, and it's, it's like sectioned out based on like scene intros. And in this scene, my notes say, that man is enormous. <laughs> and I wonder how much her place costs on Airbnb. I'd stay there. <laughs> Because literally nothing happens. And sure. This is the only thing I could think of to write. It's actually a really like adorable room. She's set up in this <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. weird side ranch outhouse area with like really nice uh, duvet cover over the blanket. With the it's a it's a nice room. It reminds me of some of the places I've actually stayed in in Southern Africa, where they actually call them farms usually, but it's similar. It's it's usually like a ranch, and but they keep game. And they do game conservation. And oftentimes there's hunting on these game conservations. But the hunting makes a lot more sense to me because it's like interesting animals. It's not just deer. Huh. It's really good that this show didn't try to set itself in, in Africa. I think that's <laughs> Can a you thing. Fucking all imagine. <laughs> also, by the way, there is no fucking way in hell that woman could live alone on that property and manage it by herself. Yeah. It's enormous. No, that's some good white men anyway. <laughs> well, not without farmhands. It's enormous, that property. Okay. It's just my, my two cents. Okay. It's like weird situation. I, I don't buy it, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't buy anything about this show. I hate it. I hate you guys. I'm that's moving. all accurate. It's valid. <laughs> so later that night, he's in the garage fixing his motorcycle. When speaking of poachers, he hears a gunshot. And of course, he walks directly towards them. Yeah. My favorite thing is that he's working on his bike with a Phillips head screwdriver only. Yep. <laughs> and then there are literally no other tools in sight. He's yeah. just holding the Phillips head screwdriver up to just a piece of metal on his bike and turning it. Oh, the the, the way they have fixing stuff <laughs> moments in, in this series in particular. We're going to get an even better one in a second. They're amazing. It's always just like tool screwdriver wave near it i am a tool fixer done yeah <laughs> there's no other tools in the garage <laughs> no the deer knocked all the the screws loose in his motorcycle he's just got an <laughs> allen wrench and he's putting it on it no, nothing's hexagonal on this i don't know <laughs> it's like the little ikea thing he's like where does the dowel go <laughs> <laughs> where do i put the flugen no nope, that's not gonna work he does the wrong thing. His motorcycle's a bookcase. God damn. <laughs> oh, it's a really bad bed. Amazing. Shit. So he follows the gunshots for a second and then Lady pulls up to be like, what was that? And he's like, gunshots. And the only reason I point this out, because nothing happens. They don't actually follow the gunshots until nine scenes later in this 23 minute episode. <laughs> but she pulls up in her little Jeep thing. And the people who made this show are idiots 
So we don't see anything that happens for 60 seconds because the fucking headlights are shining directly into our <laughs> eyes watching the show. It's almost like they put him on his mark and then they like drive up to him. But she's like night blind. So it takes a while for her to find where he is. And then she turns to him. This is my favorite part. She turns to him with a flashlight, shines it in like his belly chest area, like only low and goes, what are you doing here like she doesn't know who he is he's the only other person in this tv show oh you're the airbnb guy sorry sorry yeah. it's just you're the one human startling. being that's on my property and there's one other moment she goes do you know where they came from she's talking about the gunshots and he goes i think over there and she goes how do you know where gunshots came from and i want oh, to be yes. like uh hearing i hearing. use my ear i have hearing do you have hearing <laughs> But he actually he actually says I have a long history of hearing the direction of noises because of his, you know, gang work. He would have to ferret out the direction of gunshots a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is such a good script. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so now it's time to go back into the flashback. For no reason. Oh, this is the best flashback. No, there's a reason now. Yeah. Merrick Von Hogg is gonna tell Bartender to slip good christian lady a mickey yeah but but it doesn't even go it's not it's not even that explicit he's like well you want to make her a special drink and she's yes. like oh, okay like she has roofies next to the well drinks behind the bar <laughs> okay yeah. but how amazing would it be if he was like make her one of my special drinks and then she comes over with a big blue margarita and a fishbowl and merrick <laughs> just like tips his hat who is that <laughs> light it like on a, fire like a curly q straw yeah, exactly <laughs> Little umbrellas and a pineapple with a with a hamburger on the top. Can you do a dusting of powdered sugar around the rim? <laughs> no. Get out. And that's the flashback. So the next morning, they're having <laughs> coffee, and he wants to know if she saw anything. <laughs> He's like, so? How was the gunfight that you wouldn't let me help you with? Yeah, and it, it's still this far into the show. It's like, hey, you never never caught your name, and now it's awkward <laughs> to ask. <laughs> so strange also i love that she's about three feet from the kitchen yet she took the time to pour the coffee into a thermos to then pour it into mugs that's important <laughs> if she's doing a french press you got to pour it out immediately or else it keeps brewing so you got to get you it go. into yeah a... but wouldn't you just pour it straight into the mugs but the thermos keeps it hot all day. yeah for the three feet that she walked from the kitchen to the porch table <laughs> Look, if you're looking for sad intricacies with coffee, you are barking up the right tree in Heath, right? Okay. <laughs> I have literally the same thermos she has. That's why I'm being very defensive right now. Yeah, and you use it when you leave your home, right? I, I'm, I'm looking at that exact thermos next to me right, on he, my desk right no, now. No, Heath, we describe all the times you leave your home like Kara just asked about. <laughs> I have a lot of different friends and we, we go to... What are their names? Just to a couple of first names. Hat, Steve Hat, Hattie, Hattie Steve is one of them. Mac keyboard. <laughs> Damn. It. He's, he's Laptop. Good nope. Okay. So Heath, by the way. Yes. I have a little uh, like mug warmer on my desk. Oh, do you have an ember? It's a game changer. No, no. Because that's like the mug itself. To me, that's like, why would I only want to use one mug? I have a, a lot of great mugs. So I have a thing, you know, it's like a hot plate just for a coffee mug. Oh, And, that's and it's one. auto on, auto off. Like it has a pressure button. So you put the mug down, it senses its weight and it turns on and keeps the mug hot. And then you pick what? it up, you drink it. It's genius. It's like 20 bucks on Amazon. I'm what? getting one of those. Yeah. Then you can actually drink out of your mug. That's a famous person thing. Do they let us have those? <laughs> Did Tom Cruise tell you Does about Keegan it? Does Keegan-Michael Key have one? Oh, I hate, I hate you, you guys so much. <laughs> I hate you. you have to tell us. It's like being a cop. You, you guys realize at this point that literally nothing happens in this show, which is why we're talking yeah, about Amazon talking about Prime. Prime. <laughs> it's exactly right. But, but she's like, hey, do you think you can find those poachers? And he says, and this is very important to me, I'm not sure God wants me to hunt man again. He literally says, yeah, I'm not sure if the Lord wants me to hunt people again. Well, that's like you guys for, left something out when you told me the premise of this show clearly okay. so did this that's show literally the line <laughs> that's literally the line and oh, yes we're just learning that he's a people hunter <laughs> he helped hunt people in episode one of this show mm -hmm. so he's saying like yeah i i did hunt people like for the lord what two episodes ago but 
you know, it got racially problematic, actually. And wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Tell me about that. You know, I don't listen to your show. Tell me about this. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what was it, Eli? There was people escaping across from the Mexican Mexicans, border. This is, a, yeah. <gasps> this is allegedly this, you know, exact same ranch land. Every place that they set is right along the Mexican border. And some other rancher guy hired him to help deal with the immigration problem. The Mexicans. What? Yep. So he becomes like a, a like a day laborer minute man? Yep. A day laborer who gets into a gunfight to prevent people from crossing the border from Mexico. Yes, literally yes. that's what happened. That, that was episode one, and we continued to watch. He murders this. displaced humans who are looking for asylum. Well, no, that's he murders happened. cartel members who are chasing those displaced humans, <laughs> and then after saving the displaced humans in episode one, I swear this is true, you can listen to our first episode about it, <laughs> he, he turns, turns them into ice. ice. <laughs> That's the conclusion. That's the moral big finish of episode one is, no, 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 I was was helping, you know, somebody, a refugee. It was very hard for her. I'm sending her to ICE now. (laughs) She goes to jail. He's like, I saw those detention centers on MSNBC. They look nice. Those those babies, he's got their own cage. Oh, my God. That's so fucked up. But this is so vital because he says, I'm not sure God wants me to hunt men again. She is in this television show. So she has no context for him saying that. But her response is, I see you have a past. (laughs) I wrote in my notes, yeah, man, I just admitted to hunting people. I would have several (laughs) follow-up questions. But she does not. She does not. She seems unconcerned. She's like, you can continue to live on my property, man, whose name I do not know who hunts people. There you go. That's correct. And she actually points out this is that this is the show trying to like backpedal into morality somehow. She says, I I just want to catch him and turn him in, you know, just the hunting people, not killing people, to be clear. Yeah. Yeah. We got to draw a line somewhere. I love I love the line itself. Like it reminds me of when I took drama class in seventh grade and you would practice with those sentences like, did Johnny make an A on his math test? And then you would practice emphasizing different words like did johnny make an a on his math test did johnny make an a on his math test did johnny make an a on his math test this sentence is just like that i'm not sure if the lord wants me to hunt people again there's a lot in <laughs> there's a lot you could do it. yeah there's a lot to be broken down there is it's it true. the lord is it that he doesn't want me to hunt is it that he doesn't, want, that he me doesn't to want me to hunt people, people? <laughs> or maybe it's the again that's the important part of this sentence we're gonna need Absolutely. to see your italics tags to be official <laughs> but simon's on board with it that's it he's like yeah all right you know what that's a, it's christian either way honestly with the hunting the killing either way it doesn't matter i guess i'm gonna help you with that and um we've set up a plot involving the hunting of human beings that's what's just happened now but it is going to be maybe catch and release. So it's cool. <laughs> Stay tuned to see if that gets worse. It actually will. Spoiler. When we come back for more Sons of Thunder Episode 3, Hunter Hunted. Hey, podcast listener. You might not know this, but our very own Michael Marshall helps us screen our advertisers to avoid pseudoscience cons and the truly incredible amount of money we could be making by pitching CBD bullshit. That's right, Eli, but... uh, I mean, they have pills, creams, gummies. We just turned down a dozen offers at this point. And not just one-shots, either. People want to buy a year's worth of spots just up front for that stuff. Right, right. But like many of them make dangerous and untrue claims about their benefits. So I mean, you don't want to work with them. That's correct, Marsh. The plurality of this show does not want to work with CBD sponsors. Right, I see, yeah. Which is why we've brought him on to ask about this week's sponsor... AdamandEve.com. So, Marsh, mm. as a doctor. Or I mean, I'm I mean I'm not a doctor. As a medical doctor of the law whose advice you legally have to take on a podcast, what is your skeptical mm. opinion of putting dildos up your butt? What's my skeptical opinion of putting dildos up your butt? Yes, yeah, skeptical opinion of putting dildos up your butt. I mean, it's fine, I suppose. You know, if you're with consenting adults and you take proper medical care, it's fine. So if our podcast audience wanted your skeptical as a skeptic advice about inserting the, I don't know, just as an example, American bombshell war daddy dildo, which I should point out has a girth of eight inches, you would recommend them buying that on adamandeve.com as a skeptic in your official capacity as one of the world's largest skeptical conventions? I mean, I feel like the dildo doesn't strictly apply. Because 
I don't know if you know this, Marsh, but listeners to our podcast can get 50% off almost any one item when they enter our code AWFUL at checkout. Okay, yeah, I mean, discounts are nice, that's true. But it's not just a discount, Marsh. As the head of Skeptic Magazine UK, wouldn't you say that they can also get 10 tantalizing free gifts, including a cock ring, a vibrator, a lube sample, and six free porn movies? I mean, that, I mean that's true, but I'm not sure why I have to say it as the head of Skeptic Magazine. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Michael Marshall, in his official capacity as a doctor and skeptic of the year, two years in a row, recommends you buy the biggest dildo you can and put it right inside your butt. When you do, don't forget to use our code AWFUL. That's AWFUL, A-W-F-U-L. Offer code AWFUL at checkout at adamandeve.com. <sighs> You're like, what if I let you guys do one, one CBD product? Nope, too late. Dildo's out of the bag. God damn it. Thanks again for helping us out this week with the get ahead, Kara. Yeah, yeah, huge help. Yeah, no problem. So we were thinking, right, since we're doing a get ahead, why limit ourselves to just this get ahead? Exactly. What? So today, why don't we pre-record a bunch of future stuff? That way we don't have to bug you when it actually happens. Okay, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so uh, here are your lines. Great, yeah. So whenever you're ready, go ahead. All right. Hi, I'm Kara Santa Maria, and I'm here to express my sorrow at the passing of Noah Lugin. Dude, guys. What? What? People die, Kara. People yeah, what die. are we going to do? I'm going to send you condolences from the set of brain games? This is serious. Because actually, well, if you could get Keegan Michael Key to say something oh, that would be about so our wonderful. shows, so like how Just he like, likes okay, us okay, personally, guys, guys, that'd be fine, great. Fine, fine. All right. <clears throat> I'm Cara Santa Maria, here to express my sorrow that Heath choked to death alone in his apartment. <laughs> Seriously. Statistically, we need that audio, Cara. Okay, That's you, you don't know, though. You don't know I could, like, slip in the tub. You wish There's you lots could of slip things. in the tub. I, Guys, okay. this is getting really dark. What? We don't like it any better than you do, Cara, okay? But we got to pre-record this stuff, and there's only one more, so. Okay, all right, fine. Here we go. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Kara Santa Maria, here to express my shock and disappointment that Eli got me tooed by the rocking horse machine outside the grocery store. And that'll do it. So awesome. good. Yeah, thanks so much. Great stuff. You know, you could just not do weird stuff to that horse outside the grocery store, right? <laughs> oh, would that I could, Kara Santa Maria. Would that I could. <sighs> Why am I friends with you guys? <laughs> And we're back. When we left off, a Texas rancher and a Christian hobo were about to play the most dangerous game, deer hunters. <laughs> so now they're in the kitchen planning on hunting people, even though Simon didn't say yes and kind of said no, but that's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then they're looking over the map of of her land. Yeah, she's got a map like Wiley Coyote, like a paper map <laughs> of this land. Somehow going to be useful. He goes, they don't kill in the same place twice. <laughs> no, he literally says, you say they don't kill in the same place twice. And I'm like, no, she never said that. She pointed to two different spots and said, I found a dead buck here and a dead buck here. That's all she said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you say they don't kill in the same place twice. Like, you are not good at math. You should never run a statistical analysis, my friend. Right. Would, well, wouldn't the deer have to be going to the same place <laughs> twice in order to make that possible to kill in the same? It's where the deer, they shoot deer where the deer are. Right. Well, and also clearly there's only one deer on our whole property. <laughs> and, right. and based on that information, though, he like non-triangular he's got two spots and he somehow <laughs> triangulates he's like well then they're probably going to be here and just randomly gestures at the map <laughs> is it because of triangle there's mm, in triangle. infinity triangles you can make in this map just Tri so you know Tri it's because triangle okay <laughs> and she gives him she gives him this gun right and she's like here this is to murder the people who are stealing my deer or Kill some pigs while you're out there. We also have pigs on the farm. That's <laughs> yeah, so weird. She goes, I usually keep the hogs around for the hunters. What? What does that even mean? Okay. If she's talking about wild pigs, which have, you know, we have wild pigs in Texas, you don't keep them around. They're wild. They just run around where they want to be. And if she's talking about farmed pigs, what the fuck? You don't hunt farmed pigs. <laughs> Who hunts farmed pigs? That's so messed up. Doesn't she say... 
leave the pigs dead to help out the buzzards also <laughs> the like, ecosystem here is very confusing she goes buzzards got it i eat. don't understand ranches I, they're, they're very confusing it's a buzzard ranch <laughs> do not base your knowledge of ranches off of this fucking shitty ass show so he pulls up to the kill site on his four-wheeler and i just want to point out this is supposed to be where they shot a deer there is a Roseanne Barr period amount of blood on the ground. There are, <laughs> Jesus, this is an, you're so a lot. Gross. They killed this a deer lot. with an axe. Oh, for what? sure. <laughs> it's like they, they killed it. They processed it. They like set up camp there for three days to fully <laughs> process this deer. <laughs> he picks up the bullet at one point from this pool of blood. And they're, the people who made this are aware that like badasses pick up bullets and then do something to them. But Simon just picks it up and then puts it back down again. He's like, yep, bullet. Just what I thought. A bullet. It was a gun. <laughs> it was a gun thing. And to be clear, this is another one of those scenes where nothing happens. <laughs> so <laughs> I wrote in my notes, does his beard grow that way naturally? Like he clearly shaves his entire <laughs> head and his face, except for this weird chin curtain, right? Because it only grows straight out of his chin, like a third leg, like it's vertical, <laughs> straight out of his chin. But his whole face is smooth like a baby. Yes. And then also, why does nobody wear sunglasses in this show? They're like in the hot Texas sun and they're constantly staring into the sun, but not a single person owns a pair of sunglasses. Yeah, you'd think they'd have some of those like tactical wraparounds that are very popular with hunting people, I thought. <laughs> I thought it was like a rule. It's important. <laughs> I love that after he picks up the bullet shell, he looks at it. And he, right. He does that thing that just like, oh, you know, I pick up bullets and now I've done detective work. And then he takes the map back out and just like runs his finger <laughs> along it <laughs> as if to do some sort of math. But that's nothing. It's nothing. I, no idea. <laughs> Yep, this is the part of the map where bullets could be. I wanted him to get poached here. Just like <laughs> this scene ends with like you cut to like this giant troll mounted on one of the poachers walls next to a deer. No. Yeah, but don't worry. He's also bored during this scene. So we're going to do some more flashing back. <laughs> and in this flashback, he's going to ask Ringo, that's Maverick Von Hogg, not to date rape that lady. Right. Because he was going to make one of the special drinks for her. And Maverick Von Hogg is like, all right, I'll tell you what. If you can get her to go home with you, I won't date rape that lady. It's so weird. <laughs> what is this? They think this is just how people are. Just people sit at bars and then and then women come up to the bars and then the guy asks the bartender <laughs> lady to put a Rohypnol in the drink and she's like, I'll comply with that request. Gross. It's <laughs> just so weird. And then he's like, how about you not rape her tonight? And he's like, well... If you can bonk her, I won't rape her. Sounds like a deal. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's the deal they made. That's the deal mm -hmm. they made as like calling in an old favor. All that's happened, though, is Simon convinced this terrible rapist to roofie a different woman that night. Yeah, that's I all know, that's happened. That's there. true. He's just like bumped it down the line. I also love, too, that the way he asks is he goes, hey, Ringo, remember that time back in Canton? When that thing happened that we're not going to talk about because we don't really have enough writers to write the backstory. <laughs> so that thing happened. Now you owe me a favor. And he's like, oh, you can bring that up right now. What the fuck? And then he goes, yeah, let her walk out of here. Like, that's the favor. He, that's how he explicitly asked for the favor. Let her walk out of here as if. Now, I'm like really confused because I thought he was going to date rape her. Yeah, But let her walk out of here means what? He was going to kill her like in the bar and bury her <laughs> underneath it? Like, I'm so confused. Do better with the wishing, too. You're using, like, calling in a favor. I feel like you go for more there, right? Whatever happened in Canton, Ohio that they couldn't write, should, it felt big. <laughs> and this is a theme throughout the show, right? Because they're trying to do Sons of Anarchy, but he can't be like, remember when we killed those guys in Canton? Because it's pure flicks and grandma will turn it off. So it's like, yeah. you remember back in Canton, Canton, Ohio? Oh, yeah, they have the Museum of String there. Indeed they do, brother. <laughs> The thing with the stuff that was badass, but not too badass. You know, B-A-D-D-A-S-S. -S. Yeah, that thing. Let's not do that. And then they just like cheers again. Yep. And then everyone goes again. to church. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the Football Hall of Fame. It was awesome. Yeah. Anyway. And that's the end of the flashback. Doodly do over. Yeah. And, and he goes back to the house and he's just like, uh, I found a bullet. And she's like, yep, 
That is a bullet. <laughs> oh, also, it opens with a bunch of windmills. And I thought, like, I thought these people were, like, anti-green energy. Oh, I wanted so badly. <laughs> Greg Abbott, like, trying to warm them up at the base. He's putting little mittens on them. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah. This starts with Simon reading the Bible. Here. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the rancher lady comes up and he's like, yeah, just spend some time with the good Lord reading the Bible. And we see that he's on page like three. He's reading <laughs> Genesis. And I would I would love to have them read what he was reading and then try to work that in his plot. But they they don't. No, they didn't. <laughs> the writers. He's just yeah. like, hey, did you know that light was created before any of the stars that cast light? That's fun, <laughs> right? Before any of the stuff that don't even make sense. How would it? Okay. <laughs> God spent a lot of time passing over the waters. What do you think that means when you're the creator of the universe without a body? Ah, you know what? We'll get, let's go find those portraits. What do you think about the Kalam cosmological argument? Just like <laughs> ontologically, it don't make sense, right? <laughs> but this is where we get my best worst, right? We see the poachers. They have another deer, right? They're walking away talking about what a good hunt it is. And he sneaks behind them for so long. Amazing. And he's not even like at first he's kind of skulking in like the bushes, but then he's just on like literally a 10 foot wide <laughs> open path about three feet behind them. Like, like walking on his toes. Tiptoes. <laughs> it is, he is, they is, he is unseen because of tiptoes. And that is the only reason because of xylophone music and plucked <laughs> violins. Yeah. Also very important in this scene. They very obviously asked these young men who play the poachers to improvise their dialogue. They were not given lines. So their dialogue is, Man, we got a good deer today. Yeah, we did. Deers. Deers. Deers exist. <laughs> Don't say they, deers again. They clearly couldn't get deer, so they gave them brown trash bags. <laughs> and they're walking away right. from the, quote, kill site with brown trash bags on their backs. And it's like, if that's supposed to be a deer, that deer is the size of a corgi. <laughs> like that's it's like it's a corgi sized deer in the brown trash. Oh. Deer are not small enough to put into a trash bag and carry on your back like that. Oh, it's a good thing we brought that Rumble in the Bronx wood chipper to feed the deer into <laughs> in case we killed them. Then. It's so stupid. So now it's time to jump back into the flashback again, where Simon is going to convince this lady not to drink the the date rape drink. And he does that very subtly by walking in and going, don't drink that. I want you to have a better drink that I offer you. <laughs> That's so weird. He like pulls it out of her hand, sets it to the side. It takes, by the way, 20 minutes for the bartender to pour a whiskey with a date rape pill in it. <laughs> but immediately after when he goes, don't drink that. How about we have some apple tea? She goes right here <laughs> like, in her hands already. Yeah. That, this this biker bar we're we're led to believe here has batched apple teenies that she poured right out of a thing two seconds later. Yes, I want to be at that meeting. All right, fellas. Well, as you know, the skull bones and the neo Nazis they had a fight last night and three men were killed. Also, Karen, I just need you to start mulling mint at the beginning of the night because we cannot sell enough mojitos, if you know what I'm saying. Just just keep making pictures, you know what I'm saying? All right? And so I'm watching this show on Pure Flix, which, by the way, I did not know of until yesterday. Thank you for letting me log into your account. Welcome to the family, Karen. Yeah, Welcome yeah. to the family. You can get a lifetime membership for only like $10,000 one-time payment, and you'll have it forever. Eli sends me all the info and he's like, it's on Pure Flix. So like, get it there. And I'm like, what the fuck is Pure Flix? And then he's like, oh, welcome to Gab. And then I'm like, okay. And he's like, yeah, just set up an account. And I'm like, fuck you. Give me your login. I'm not setting up a Pure Flix account. And that was our exchange. But so as I'm writing my notes, I'm pausing the show because I'm watching the whole thing on my computer and like switching, you know, browser windows. And it shows, you know, the, the pause screen. It has the name of the show and then it has the rating. And this show has a 3.8 rating out of four on Pure Flix. I hate everything. I want to really? die. <laughs> okay. To be fair, <laughs> that could be one rating and Simon's mom, right? She's just being like, not his best work. Liked him better in Harold and Kumar sequel. <laughs> I actually think that rating was Heath. Because what you guys didn't hear is while we were paused, Heath was talking about how excited he is for the next episode. <laughs> it's got a poker game. <laughs> If we're gonna play this this show is gonna play poker in this episode. It's so exciting. 
But luckily, uh, Christian Lady is totally unfazed by the giant bald man who snatches her drinks away and insists she drinks the batch apple teeny she's handed instead. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the end of the flashback. Yep, yep. I wanted them to show us them walking away with martini glasses just spilling everywhere because they're the dumbest fucking glasses. <laughs> they are really stupid, and they filled them all the way to the Oh, top. absolutely, yeah. Like a toddler <laughs> doing a tea party. So... Meanwhile, back in the real world, the two poachers have finally noticed this giant guy. And I mentioned this because they have to do act like they see him for the first time. And it's impossible for them not to already be seeing them because he's <laughs> ma- he's a mountain. So they're like, oh, what? What's that behind us? Oh, right. A nine foot tall garden gnome. What are you doing here? <laughs> It's also so weird because he, like, catches them at their front door. And I'm like, so they live on her property? (laughs) Like, the poachers live on her property? Even better, that leaves two options. One, they live on her property. Or two, he managed to follow them without being noticed until he made it (laughs) off of her ranch. (laughs) Right. It's been three days. I've just been tiptoeing the entire time. (laughs) The balls of my feet are raw. Just two hours of him military crawling by. <laughs> <laughs> so then they're like, he's like, what are you doing, poachers? And they're like, oh, shit. We used to work for Kelly, but then something horrible happened, and now we don't. And she ain't never going to forgive us. And then that's it for the backstory? Like, nobody asks any questions? Yep. Like, it's no. just, they just vaguely reference the past being awful. And that's why she won't hire me back. Right. I have a fan theory. <laughs> okay. Which is that... You have a fan theory is what you're calling so this. So these brothers, <laughs> I have called in my notes Amish brother and gun and Jesus. I'm obsessed with Amish brother. Yeah, because Amish brother <laughs> is trying to deliver the backstory. But gun and Jesus, who looks like he's playing Jesus in like a, in like a nice Salt Lake City production. Not top yeah. of the line, but like... He's just below Jim Caviezel. If if Jim hadn't taken the part, this guy would have gotten it. Like this guy's in Salt Lake and he could have gone either way. He could have stayed in the in the like Ward 7 or he could have like gone full fundamentalist <laughs> and like had like a lot of sister wives. And he's just trying to figure out which direction his life is going to take him. Right. He, He'll have a podcast soon. Yeah. He interrupts Amish brother so often with crazy violence and nonsense, I can only assume his part was unscripted. They just gave him an actual firearm and they were like, yeah, man, just whenever he's talking, you just chime in with violence and insanity. He was like, got it. All right. One Jared Leto coming right up. (laughs) Oh, no, for sure. There's clearly no script here because Amish brother, his whole like role is just to shake his head nervously. <laughs> just he shakes his head nervously back and forth and he that's goes, his thing. Brother, brother, but remember when he's like, shut up. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's the whole <laughs> We didn't write for me to say anything past but okay, yeah, you're right. You <laughs> it's go. Like those old SNL sketches where it's like, <laughs> but I but, <laughs> but. <laughs> but to be fair to him, gun toting Jesus guy just does more and more dangerous things with his handheld firearm as the scene goes on, right? He starts by being like, hey, man, I've got a gun. Just watch out. But by the end of it, he's full on filleting this handgun, right? And (laughs) spinning the chamber and tying the fucking trigger to a bouncy ball that he's got on a paddle. Oh, yeah. He holds it up to his own head at one point. (laughs) Yeah. Remember? (laughs) Which has no stakes. Simon's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nope. If that's fine, then free gun. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, clearly, the way this show is going to end is that either gun toting Jesus or Simon is dead. Why not just end it here? That would that would have cut a nice little chunk out of the show. I know, yeah. that actually would have been a much more enjoyable show. I love their discussion of economics for a second. Oh, well, mm-hmm. clearly, that's the point. That's the point of the scene, right? It's angsty, poor white men festering in their poor whiteness. Like, it's basically just, they took our gerbs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. It's real hard for white men in Texas economically. Right. That's the point they're making. Mm-hmm. The, the, these guys, they're actually called Brad and Ryan. And th- they're <laughs> okay. complaining. Okay. <laughs> they're complaining like, well, there's no work around here. We can't get jobs, so we have to be poachers. And then Simon kind of just like, tries to help with advice he's like yeah you know 
yeah, capitalism is oppressive for white men in Texas. I get it. But yeah, there's a lot of, you know, gig economy stuff you can do. Have you tried like driving around on a motorcycle till you find a job where you can also live at the same place? Because <laughs> that works for me like once a week. Yeah. My favorite. Yeah. Also, the other big point is that Kelly, who owns the ranch, isn't Christian enough. So that's like what we're going to we're going to get here in the conclusion. Well, she won't forgive them. And he's like, well, let me talk to her. I'll I'll Jesus her up and maybe she'll forgive you for stealing from her. Wait, stealing. Is that is that what they're? Yeah, it's for the stealing. Sorry. Right. Go ahead. For poaching her ranch. Business. Because there's clearly something horrible that happened previously, like like angry gun and Jesus raped her and they just never you know it's like the thing that cannot be named she's never gonna forgive me for that it's like well, what the fuck did you do yeah. well, and he never asks right he's, <laughs> he's never like hey I should probably find out why she won't forgive you he's just like no nah, don't worry I got, I've read page three and four of the bible I'll hear with the good stuff <laughs> <laughs> so he heads back to Kelly to tell her the score and this is so fucking good because they've written themselves into the corner right which is he can't tell her who the poachers are because she wants to convince her to forgive them first. Yeah. But that means he has no information in this information conveyal <laughs> scene. So she's like, did you find the poachers? And he's like, yes. And she's like, great. Who are they? I'll call the cops. And he's like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we're at a script impasse. How do we proceed? And you know what they say here? is he tries to convince her that it's just poor guys who just needed the food to eat. So he says to her, well, they're taking the game for meat. As opposed to what? <laughs> Ivory? Like, what? The, of course these poachers are poaching the deer for meat. What else would they be poaching the deer for? Yeah, ridiculous. But what we're going to learn here is that this is how the Bible comes in. So... Simon claims that the Bible says to be cool and let people steal from you. Mm -mm. Does it? It does, I don't think it says that. I'm pretty sure it does not. <laughs> that is not what the Bible says. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I do know that the Bible says. It says that people who steal your animals owe you, they're not sure, either two, four, five, or seven times the amount of animals that they took mm -hmm. huh. in different parts of the Bible. Those are the numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Proverbs... It's seven times. And if they don't have seven times what they stole, they owe you everything in their house. And you have to like work for them. For, you have to be a slave. Mm -hmm. Oh, so she could get all of their family. Because he's got like a wife and a pregnant kid. No, wait, sorry. I said yeah, that wrong. No, I think <laughs> he's got a pregnant well, wife yes. and a kid. Yep. The thing is <laughs> a second. Have he doesn't have a pregnant child. Although, to be <laughs> fair, it would have been really funny if they came for their apology and they just had like a forklift of 47 deer and they were like, here you go, seven times what we stole. This took a... <laughs> but, there you go. but instead, you know, she's just going to end up with a bunch more camo furniture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, is that a matching couch? You gentlemen are forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> also, oh my God, do you guys remember how when they're at the house... They're sitting there on the front porch in rusted out chairs, literally rusted out chairs. Yeah. Yet there's a brand new Jeep Wrangler parked there. Right. <laughs> it's like a brand new Jeep, but they live in a shack. It's so weird. Very selective. The poverty of this show, very selective. Yeah. No, and they've got like a fifty thousand dollar all pure gold sniper rifle from like <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow's goop collection, but they can't get a chair. Yeah. <laughs> Priorities, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it looks like they pivoted from hunting humans to the much more biblical solution of enslaving humans. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess uh, we're going to find out if that's literally the message of the show when we come back for the Christian morality conclusion of Sons of Thunder, Episode 3, Hunter Hunted. All right, Carrie, you ready for the ad reads? Yeah, about that. How, how are you guys doing ad reads? I mean, I thought this episode was, was a get-ahead. Oh, it is. Mm, uh, that's it is, why yeah. we've cleverly designed the script for this ad to cover all of our advertisers. We're just going to leave a blank for whoever buys the spot. It's perfect. Okay. If you guys say so. All right. Great. And action. <laughs> Eli, <laughs> Eli, why are you <clears throat> um, okay. using that shovel to scoop inferior t-shirts out of Heath's dirty Butthole. Seriously, you guys? Carrot, we don't make fun of your ads. Yeah, what kind please, of ads are on brain you, games? Huh? Read, make fun of your ads on brain games. <sighs> Fine. Okay. 
Eli, why are you using that shovel to scoop inferior t-shirts out of Heath's dirty butthole? Because, Kara, it's the only way to get his penis erect and his hair growing. Well, then why don't you try? Perfect. And we just throw in the advertiser here. What's... And again, we'll just throw in the advertiser. I still get the point, though, right? Yes, that still counts. You still, I, yes, you that still counts. Get the point. That's, it's in the rules. That's a, okay, still get that's the point. a point. I'm, I'm marking it. Kara? <clears throat> They're the best way to keep your penis as hard as it would be to find a t shirt of the same quality as your hair will be when you're saving time not going to the post office. Seriously? Kara, Eli I have has a child. child. I have a child. child. We need you to read this. <clears throat> okay, fine, fine. Okay. <clears throat> and right now, our listeners can get something by going to the website. That's perfect. Don't worry. We're going to dub it in. And entering the code AWFUL at checkout. That's a website and A-W-F-U-L at checkout. All right, Kara. We are in. Website. Never go to the post office with a bald, limp penis that isn't wearing a nice t-shirt or sunglasses again. Okay, excellent. That'll be great. That'll work. So is is the penis wearing sunglasses and a t-shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's a maverick. Uh oh, the business of sport business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure do appreciate your help on the farm. No problem, ma'am. No problem. You see, people have been stealing my deer, and I need to set them right. Yeah, I see. I see. Well, uh, have you heard of the Bible? I, I have. Well, I wonder if we might turn to it for some guidance here. I suppose you're going to tell me to turn the other cheek or forgive him or something. Oh, no, no, no. Hell no. Hell no. Have you read the book? We're going to kill the fuck out of those guys. We are? Hell yeah. We're going to kill them. We're going to kill them. We're going to kill their families and even kill their animals if they happen to be Amalekites. Uh, do, do you know if they're Amalekites by any chance? I I, I don't know what that uh, is. Okay, it's fine. We'll, we'll ask when we get there. Now, uh, we're going to need a Pre-battle sacrifice. Do you, do you have a pyre? So, sorry, a what now? A pyre? A pyre. It's, it's okay. It's okay. I, I can build one. Uh, I'll go get some wood. But don't drink any blood while I'm gone, or I will have to kill you. You know what? They they can have the deer. I'm just, I, I, I'm going to go. Oh, come on. Come on. Don't, don't you want to kill the women and children? No? Fine. Fine. You you cut up your own concubine then. <laughs> and just a quick reminder, Kara, this is a get ahead, so try to keep the topical stuff to a minimum if you're able to. Yeah, no problem. All right, great. You guys ready to record? Yep. Yeah, I am recording. Test, test. So am I. All right, I'm recording. All right, here we go. Welcome back. To God awful movie. March seventh. Today is March seventh. God damn it! So fast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Eli's dumb. <laughs> Eli's stupid. I am. He does ridiculous things. <laughs> and we're back, and we're going to start with another flashback with Simon and Vanessa Angel enjoying their delicious apple teenies. <laughs> They oh, don't yeah. know how to talk about these apple teenies. It's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> He's like, yummers, <laughs> apple, and I also assume teeny. <laughs> <laughs> They're neon green, too, by the way. Neon green. I'm also confused because maybe it's because I grew up Mormon, so sometimes I mix up. Like, I was that kid when I was young when people were like, in Genesis, it says blah, blah, blah. And then I'd be like, yeah, the Nephites and the Lamanites. And they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because <laughs> they just mix it all together for Mormon kids and you don't know the difference. So is Jesus okay with drinking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Like, it didn't feel very pure flicks. New Testament is is all good about drinking, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Actually, I think Old Testament's all good about drinking. Just uh, like it's not specifically a, a sin thing. No. Yeah. Especially apple teenies. <laughs> <laughs> Especially apple teenies in one frosted red glass and one frosted <laughs> green glass. So this, again, this bar specifically, the bar manager was like, bar full of biker meth dealers. We should get red and green for the martini glasses, right? When we want to do like Christmas colors. specials, right? Come on. <laughs> Oh, and this is the part where it's clear that what's her name is British. Because she's like, this place seems rough. 
it seems like it's strange that you <clears throat> that it's strange that you <laughs> that you come here regularly. Yeah. Strange, twang it, twang. <laughs> He has this amazing moment where he's like, look, everybody here sucks. Everyone's here because they earned their place. And she's like, what did you do to earn your spot? And this giant man, this mountain of a human <laughs> with a bald head and tattoos sitting in the middle of this leather bar is like, what the fuck do you think? I, I juggled. I juggled to get my way into this messy <laughs> like biker bar. I'm actually in a doodly do flashback. I turn out to be a good guy. It's not. <laughs> I, but yes, some bad things. But her response, of course, is that Jesus loves everybody yeah but i don't understand what that has to do with her liking him because nothing. it's clear that they're supposed to be flirting now but he's literally hideous right <laughs> and she's a normal looking woman and it makes no sense right yeah. she's she's supposed to be attracted to him but she's supposed to be like oh i love how you look like a fairy tale creature <laughs> i don't know man yeah. it's the doodly do over like, he looks like Quasimodo in leather. Yeah. And she's like an attractive woman who wandered out of a PTA meeting and into a leather bar. Like if V.I. Lennon became a giant and a biker. Exactly. Yeah. So, doodly doo's over. We're back outside, and Kelly is preparing her vengeance, but he's going to talk her out of it. <laughs> It's so good because she's like, I'm going to fucking kill those people who stole my deer. I don't need your help. And he's like, hey, have you ever been given a second chance? And she's like, fuck you. And he's like, OK, not a great approach. Not a good start. <laughs> he's literally like, I used to hunt people. So you should forgive these boys. Yeah. And she's like, solid logic right there, my friend. I feel like we can pivot from human hunting to to slavery. Would that make it better? Can you just have him work on? She's like, yeah. That's actually, you know what? That's good. That's good. Slavery. I like that. Yeah, you're right. Literally. You're right. That's what they get to. But of course, as they're doing it, I'm realizing in this scene that all of her rancher clothes are literally brand new. Like just pop the tags. <laughs> like the wardrobe department completely forgot to like rub them in the dirt. So it's a pristine <laughs> leather. Yeah. Perfect flannel. Like it's ridiculous. Well, they had to return everything as soon as they were done shooting. They, they, you know, exactly. this is Pure Flix money, not Netflix money. Okay. She's wearing a cowboy hat that looks like it's never left the box. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, the point is, Simon is going to go back to the brothers and tell them that her, her counter offer is slavery, right? Sure. The man yep, yep. who pointed a gun at his head in response to Simon being like, hello, guys, is probably going to be super reasonable <laughs> about her offer of slavery. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's the plan. Yeah. And, and so he goes there and tries that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, good news, guys. You can apologize and be a slave. <laughs> they're like no no one of them is no. like no the other one's like sounds good to me yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Amish That's guy right. is like oh slavery sounds really Ryan's cool. like you know it's a, yeah all right I'll do it I'll do and it. why is does Amish guy have a home or does he live in the shack with his brother and his brother's poor wife who is literally sweeping the cinder blocks that make up the porch of <laughs> yep. her house she's sweeping dust from one side of her dust to her other side she's of her just dust. moving <laughs> rubble yeah. yeah that's all that's happening and yes I think Ryan the brother lives with them yes okay all right. Yeah. But the point is, they're going to come to the ranch that night to apologize and like officially agree to their slavery. Well, only Ryan promises. Right. He, only Ryan. Yeah. Gun Jesus does not promise that. He has a very different plan, which we're about to get to. So he <laughs> he goes back to the ranch and knocks on her door. She's not there. We see Gun Brothers sitting on the porch stroking his gun. He's not going to go ask for forgiveness. This is one of my favorite scenes. So he's got this really weird accent, too. Like, he can't keep up with a southern accent and sometimes kind of sounds like a chimney sweep. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I can't quite follow. <laughs> and he's just rubbing a rag over the barrel of his gun for literally no reason. Just like, he's not actually cleaning the gun. He's not doing anything methodical. He's just like, like, getting vibes. Yeah. And he says, he says this line. I ain't weak enough to give in to anyone else's mercy. Aaron fucking Sorkin over here. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was high five in the writer's room. So deep, so deep, guys. So good. <laughs> I also, I, I got to mention his beard one more time. First, <laughs> Wait, whose so, beard? 
Simon's Beard. Simon's Beard, okay. Simon's Beard. So first of all, they're out on this like plane in Texas. So there's a lot of wind sometimes. And this has happened in the other episodes too. There's a bunch of wind and his beard is so big that it catches a good deal of wind, like a spinnaker amount of wind. Mm -hmm. And it flies up and it gets in his eye a little bit, but it hurts him a little bit because it hurts <laughs> yep. to have your beard just get wedged off to the side like that. So you get to watch him be like weirdly uncomfortable. There's not a single scene in this show, in the three episodes we've watched so far that doesn't attempt seriousness, where Simon's beard isn't waving in the breeze like a wacky inflatable arm tube man. <laughs> yeah. Kind of kills the vibe. And it's so big. I feel like he knocks over stuff with his beard all the time. You know how like a dog like a doesn't Labrador know about puppy? its tail? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know he's just, oh, I turn. Sorry, I have to turn not as fast. I keep doing that. <laughs> Fucking apple teeny. Yeah. <laughs> so they show up. Amish brother and Simon show up to apologize. She, again, I don't know why she wasn't there. I don't understand anything about the choreography of this scene. <laughs> She pulls up in her Jeep and she's like, oh, you didn't tell me it was them. Fuck that guy. I fucking hate him. Yeah. And she goes, she goes, I'm calling the warden. Like they just skipped the part where there's cops in this town and they just directly call the warden. Yep, just straight that's to not the how warden. The justice system work. It is on buzzard ranches. Buzzard ranches that may survive <laughs> off corn deer. Did you guys notice how there's a sign on the outside of her house that says, welcome to the ranch, <laughs> like the generic ranch. Like, <laughs> that's another thing. If you own a ranch, you name it. And usually the name has to do with the cattle brand. Like you guys have seen this, like the lazy R and it's an R on its side or like the rock and P ranch. And it's a P with like a semicircle under it. Like, cause oh. that's, and that's why they're called that because that then they brand their cattle with that symbol. So this should say like, welcome to one corgi deer ranch or whatever. <laughs> yes, yes. But I guess all of her cows are just branded with the ranch. <laughs> Someone steals from her. No, no, I also have a ranch. Shit. Nah, they got me there. They got me there. <laughs> but she comes out and she's like, I don't want thieves working for me. But but that was the whole conceit she agreed to. What did she think was <laughs> going right. to happen? Right. <laughs> that's the whole point they stole her deer and they have he has no counter argument he literally is just like kelly come on <laughs> kelly Except he doesn't say kelly because he never uses that's her right. come on lady <laughs> lady <laughs> come on yeah he wants kelly to give this guy a chance and just a moment ago he was reading romans 7 which is <laughs> supposed to be like the specific bible lesson Romans 7, I went and checked. Obviously, I didn't have it memorized. It's about how to be a slave to the law in a good way. That's what Romans 7 is about. <laughs> and to be fair, Amish Brother is fucking nailing it. <laughs> oh, Amish Brother is the best. He's my favorite character of all of this. He's like, I I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm he's He's got like everything down. He's paying his penance. He's very like sweet and lovable. I kind of want to hug him. Mm -hmm. I want to hug Amish <laughs> Brother. I don't like that she hates him. And then, as though this TV show realized it was about to reach a peaceful resolution, Jesus' brother just starts sniping at them. <laughs> so yep. weird. He's like up on a hill with a sniper rifle. And she she literally goes, when you said he was coming, you didn't mention this. Yeah, clearly he did not know that his brother was going <laughs> to try to murder him. Or I don't think he would have walked into the line yeah. of fire, you fucking idiot. I didn't bury that headline. This is new to me, too. <laughs> the maybe getting murdered. Oh, I, sorry, sorry. I should have explained. I'm coming and my brother's bringing bullets. He's sending <laughs> bullets as his messenger. Seems weird that I didn't mention that. And. Simon, again, action show, right? This is this is Sons of Anarchy, the Christian show. So Simon's like, what's the fastest route up there? Yeah, he's like, I'll take you. I'll like, take he already knows where he is. Well, I guess it'd be a, a straight line up there, probably. Sure but it, it, the fastest route would not involve a very slow giant. So I don't <laughs> also, know also how clearly, well this is going to go. They don't understand the purpose of sniping. Like, they don't understand how sniping works, that you don't immediately know where the bullets are coming from. When you're being sniped, somebody is in a position of safety, right? They can see you but you cannot see them. That's what it is to be a sniper. Yet they immediately know where he is and they sneak drive toward him, which he can clearly see them doing because he's a sniper. <laughs> they pull out their paper map. Oh, sniper hill. He's yeah, probably right he here. He's 
probably at the wait. Give me two spots he isn't, and I can triangulate where he is. I shouldn't have named it Sniper Hill. And like you're not gonna sneak up on him. He has the vantage point. He can see you driving towards him. <laughs> it's but, so stupid. It is so stupid. But it's even dumber when they try to sneak up on the sniper with a golf cart. A golf cart. They sneak. The golf cart might as well be on its tiptoes. That's how silly it is. <laughs> they drive this golf cart up and get the they get the drop on him. Yep. They do. Yeah, but it's golden hour, so they get a lot of really pretty <laughs> shots. It is the golf cart by Nissan Leaf. Yeah. So it's just like super whisper. Yeah. Well, you know all golf golf carts are electric, right? I have, so they are actually quiet. Are they? <laughs> Like, <laughs> Sorry, Heath. Uh, my head, I should explain I've that Heath on... comes from golf people, but not enough money to rent a golf cart. People, so... <laughs> I see. <laughs> That's actually one hundred percent accurate. Yeah, from... I've been on golf carts though, and yes, I'm now realizing that yeah, they were probably all <laughs> <laughs> very quiet. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised cart. though if Texas had like <laughs> golf like, carts that roll powered coal. golf carts <laughs> with yeah. With like a rocket engine behind them. No, yeah. they just literally take crude oil. <laughs> you just take it out of <laughs> yeah. the out of the ground and put it straight in the engine. They're just shooting flames out of the front with a guitar player on it, like Mad Max. Yeah, absolutely. My favorite though is the golf carts that are really quiet, but when you put them in reverse, they go beep beep. <laughs> And I wish that that would have happened in this scene. Oh. <laughs> They're backing up, backing up to him. Try to park. Beep. 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 That would have been good. Again, crazy billionaire remake. <laughs> so they corner the brother and he's like, don't you see, man, it can't get worse. And Amish brother very rightly is like, it can't get worse, dude. We stole a deer. You just tried to murder a lady. <laughs> I know. And like, did you hear? I love it. It's like it can't get worse as if there are stakes, but there are no stakes because they forgot to give us the backstory. <laughs> so <laughs> right. we have no idea why this guy is so invested in murdering this woman. No, he's no. never shown any reason that he would murder her, except that like, <laughs> well, this show's Sons of Thunder. There's got to be some gun wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of gun wrestling, we get my favorite physical moment. Uh, in any TV show or movie ever, maybe mm -hmm. we get this giant basically doing a backup with a beep to sneak up on a sniper. <laughs> and now he's physically, again, nine foot tall, enormous man, like <laughs> slinking up behind this guy with a gun. And he's he, he can't decide what to do exactly. He's like, all right, what move should I use? Big face slap? No, <laughs> sweep, sweep the le strangle left. And then he he like pump fake strangle left thinks better of it and then finally strangles the guy to the right side <laughs> pulls him down yep so slowly yes he does and clearly this guy is a normal sized guy with a gun but he looks like he's my size yeah, next to he the looks, giant he looks like a toddler he looks like a toddler is about to be he just like flash cuts over to him and his bounceroo calming down just like okay <laughs> this is better I'm sorry I tried to shoot you I just needed to get this energy out so that's so ridiculous that we need to go back into the flashback Oh, yeah. We, okay. A flashback <laughs> while strangling a guy who has a gun <laughs> okay. is when this is happening. He had a concussion, all right? Yeah. Come in, on. The, <laughs> in the crazy millionaire remake, we just show him flashing back as this guy's like, can't breathe, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this show is going for the argument we've heard a million times on the show, which is like, it doesn't matter how bad a person you are. Jesus loves you anyways. Except there's this weird... Maybe I was trying to get raped angle to it. Oh, really? Did you guys pick up on this? Was there? I don't I didn't pick up on this. Tell me about it. I have no idea what you're talking so about. So she's like, oh, Jesus loves everybody, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, this bar is full of rapists. That guy over there was going to rape you. And she's like, maybe I wanted to be here anyways. And he's like, <laughs> Ugh. I mean, they got a fet life group for you, lady. Don't just come into random bars <laughs> looking for that. Also, I'm confused because when you guys told me the setup of the show. You said this is like biker Christian guy in a biker gang, like a Christian biker gang driving around. So I'm sitting here thinking this is a Christian biker bar. So why is it full of rapists? Oh, no, this is his old biker uh, bar. He's the only one who became he's, Christian. He's out the of the gang. There's, no, yeah. there's no more Christians. 
I see. Christian music bonfire. So basically, he's like, that guy was going to rape you. I may or may not. Would you like to leave with me and find out? And yeah. she's like, sounds yes. good. Also, clearly, those apple teenies were delicious, seeing as how they were 100% full when they get up to leave. <laughs> <laughs> they just walk away from extremely full apple teenies. I mean, Kara, let's be honest. <laughs> there is no physical way to shoot that actor drinking an apple teeny that isn't the funniest thing in the universe. <laughs> His right. whole beard would like go into the weird little he's chalice. Just absor- his beard turns bright green, just sucks it all up. Oh, didn't get any. It like slowly rises up. Like. Sorry, I'll wring it out in the shower. Don't worry about it. Fun fact this is also a lead test. The water here is not great, just so you have a heads up. So they walk away. That's the end of that doodly do. Meanwhile, back in the show, Gun Brother is under arrest for attempted murder think so right yeah but not deer stealing which is so it's amish brothers like hey thanks for not telling the cops about the deer i wrote in my notes i think the murder charges will be sufficient man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i love that he literally goes it was super cool of you to give Ryan that full-time job. And it's like, <laughs> that's the weirdest way to say that sentence. Like, who talks like that? With benefits and weekends? Wow. And an attractive <laughs> benefits. Pro- I thought a number was going to pop up on the bottom of the screen at any second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. And a $15 an hour, thanks to Joe Manchin, finally caving. Yeah. God. Uh, and then he, like, points to Jesus. Like something happens and he like references Jesus. This is the very end of the episode. He's like, you're a good woman. Jesus is up there and he loves you. And she makes, she has this look in her eyes. <laughs> like it's like this look of disdain. Literally like she was thinking, <laughs> I was going to fuck you, but you keep talking about Jesus and it instantly <laughs> turns my vagina into the Mojave. You okay. need to leave now. As someone who's been on the recipient end of this look multiple times, Cara Santa Maria, you need to check your privilege. <laughs> Okay. You tell people a little bit of fun magic history and all of a sudden this blind date is over. I don't want to get into it. I feel like that. It's, it's some some people say it's a disease if it's not like the Mojave. That's that's actually a medical thing from a doctor that I like doctor wife. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is just the end of the episode. This is it. This is it. Yeah. And I I should point out you weren't here. There has been less and less in each episode. Right. We we cannot help but believe that the next episode will just be him taking a painful shit. And playing poker though. It's gonna be great. And poker. Okay. So did Kelly the rancher learn a lesson here? Who like what's no. what's the moral of the story? They're 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 suggesting there was a moral because he's leaving now, so that means it's done. All of us put that in our notes. What was the point of this? <laughs> like, what was that? Why did I watch? This? I hate you guys so much. <laughs> but that's it. Now he leaves. That's, just, yep, that's the show, that's you that's guys. That's the end that's, of the episode. What do, what do we say yeah. now? Yep. He just drives away being like, do you know any of the ranchers who need like a lesson and a work thing <laughs> where I live with them? No, yeah, you know, I'll find them. It's my thing. I find them. That's also, it. no payment for this work. So maybe she just like Venmos him later. And we yeah, just don't exactly. see that. <laughs> I think the payment was living in that very nice Airbnb and uh, right. some venison sandwiches. <laughs> that that he never ate. <laughs> that they never ate. Whatever. Yeah. So apparently we learned about the godly way to enslave people for stealing. That's the point of Romans 7 and Romans 8, I guess. So which Bible story do you want to see Simon teaching next? Oh, I want one of the ones where like anything happens. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> you and me both, Kara Santa One of those. Or uh, uh, what bird can you blame it on when you fuck your daughters while you're drunk? Oh, that's a good one. That, yeah. that sounds yeah, fun. It's, it's an important section from the book of God. Yep. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. They've got at least a handful of episodes left. While that does it for our review of Sons of Thunder episode three, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found more bad art on the internet. So Eli, what's on deck? We'll be watching the pro-conversion therapy documentary, Censored. It's all about how the people who want to lie to children about whether or not they can ungay themselves by praying are being censored in their documentary that they made and is on YouTube. All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to wrap it up. Huge thanks to Kara, as always. 
And uh, is there anything that people should know about coming up for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to watch another horrible fucking garbage movie because I'm totally not busy, you know, seeing patients, <laughs> writing a dissertation, and working on two other podcasts or anything. So, yeah, when is uh, my debt going to be paid off, guys? I told you we can discuss it at the Bloodman. <laughs> also, this is a get ahead, Kara, so you're probably going to be a dentist by the time people hear this. Don't worry about it. You guys know I'm not going to school to be a dentist, right? I, I when I talk about that. my patients, I'm I, doing I, I was, he does, therapy he does definitely with not them. Know that. Yeah. No. I'm not working on their teeth. <laughs> Or are you? <laughs> all right. Also, I'd like to give a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Kara Santa Maria and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. The characters in this show went on to... Who the fuck knows? I don't even think they have names. <laughs> Simon does have a name. Didn't didn't catch it in this episode. You're correct. But Simon went on to broker a 50 shekel payment from a rapist to the father of the victim and then marry that rapist and victim together, just like God intended. That's in the Bible. <laughs> Shooty gun Jesus was surprised to learn that attempted murder carries a much heavier jail sentence than deer stealing. <laughs> Uh, I gotta start recording. Record to the class. Oh Thank my you. god! Yeah. Oh, I allow the recording. Yeah, that, I have a university one. So that was so weird, though. It like said it verbally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have <laughs> the, a university the, one too. Does it do that? Uh, it does it if should. you have all the like safety, don't be gross settings on, which NYU automatically turns on and doesn't let you turn off. Gotcha. Okay. NYU is by far the most problematically woke university in the country, according to Ben Shapiro. <laughs> oh. Ben Shapiro needs to check out my school, my psychology <laughs> only school that has a social justice and diversity concentration. Oh, there. yeah. You would have been on that <laughs> list if you knew about it. Yeah. yeah. I'll watch Kara fight Ben Shapiro. That's good TV. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> be amazing. Put good money on Kara. All right. Are you lefty or righty? Southpaw? <laughs> righty. I think. Righty? Okay. I don't know what fist I punch with, but yeah, I'm assuming I'm a righty. I would say use both with Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Fists and knees. Yeah, a lot of knees and elbows. A little Muay Thai. Just mm -hmm. misdirect him with his doctor wife. I think, yeah, I think all I have to do is just say the word vagina a lot and he'll like run screaming. He'll be, right he'll be very disoriented. Start yes. coughing. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to sink? We're doing a five count. Oh, Eva. five count. I was like, Heath, fucking start. <laughs> All right. We're all just sitting here That's with our thumbs Eli. up our ass. That's Get your Eli. cues, which is silence. <laughs> there we go. All right. I'm recording. Morgan, you missed it, but Kara's going to come play poker with us when we Aww. sucker her into being our And I'm going to lose and I'm going to be really And he's going to lose gonna be, and Noah's going to lose and she's going to be present for that horrifying tension that happens when Heath and Noah play games. Oh, yes. Do you guys get like on tilt really easily? It's no, it's I just don't lose. I don't I don't know what Eli's talking about. I win at all the games. A human can be go through. I love it when people like go on tilt in a way that's like not acceptable. Like it's <laughs> disproportionate to the amount of money on the table. <laughs> and you're like, calm down, bro. Oh, like, yeah. So you funny. should absolutely tell them to calm down. That's great. <laughs> that, that be great. <laughs> we'll be jumping out of the window with a parachute. But right before yeah. I do that, you tell everyone involved to calm down. No, no, Eli, you and I will just be sitting there eating popcorn, being like, oh, my God, this is going to make the best goth for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, you do get me. That is what I do. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's accurate. All right, five count. Five count.
like you like my my Texas accent. It's excellent. You got it down. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Born and raised. <laughs> we we occasionally have Marsh do a Texas accent. It doesn't oh, work out quite well. <laughs> it's adorable though. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Animal House close. Oh, he didn't say it. <laughs> Good trick. Eli normally tries to say breakfast. Oh, I was like, what's I, happening? I, I almost daffy ducked him there. He, he totally daffy ducked him. Says, Damn it. <laughs> Rabbit season. season. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.